So assumption of risk, remember we talked about assumption of risk? You assume the risk every time you do something. We also talked about product liability that a manufacturer has a duty to create something that will not harm you if used as intended. All right, such as a football helmet, brought it up. So they have a responsibility to make sure that you don't get hurt when you're using your deal. Like a helmet. We talked about a helmet. Said, is it intended for keeping your neck safe? And y'all told me no, and then y'all went into why. So here's the new stuff that we weren't worth talking about, and that's insurance. So anybody here have insurance? Any kind of insurance? drive? Don't nobody drives. That's good. So you probably don't need insurance. What about life insurance? Anybody got life insurance on them? Some people get in this deal, oh, I've got children. I need to have life insurance on my children. Okay? Why would you do that? I mean, yeah, you guys are really great people. But all you are is a liability. Life insurance is when you die, someone gets money. Life insurance. It insures your life. When you die, the beneficiary gets the beneficiary gets the benefits. So, like me, I don't know, I got half a million dollars of life insurance. If I die, my wife will get half a million dollars. Now, what about with a kid? Insure your kids, yes or no? Why not? Because why? Why does I'm, why don't why would my wife need money if I die? Well, yeah, but Funerals are about twenty grand. Why three? Why three to five hundred thousand dollars? What bills? All the bills. What bills? Mortgage. Mortgage, exactly. Got to pay a mortgage. So if you've got two people and you're married and you want insurance, great. I think it's a great idea that you get some life insurance. So. There you are. I die, and my wife now has to pay the mortgage all by herself, all the utilities, all of everything by herself. And that's going to be a little tough for her for to, to make the ends meet, right? So the insurance kicks in. The insurance goes in, then um, she's able... Now, you don't want so much insurance to where she's got a better life than with you dead than with you alive. It might put a target on you on yourself. Well, not with my wife. So insure a kid? Yes? No. Life insurance. Why do you say no? The liability. You know what a liability is? You cost money. You bring no money in. Actually, if a child passes, the family is in a, better in a better financial situation than what it was having the child in the family. I know it sounds awful, but financially, that's true. You lost a huge liability compared to having a kid. You can figure a kid's going to run ten grand a year, a year, fifteen thousand a year. Quite a bit of money. So, anyways, what about cars? Anybody got, you all ride in a car? You get pulled over. They say, "Can I see your 
your license, registration, and proof of insurance. Huh. If I'm driving a car, by law, you must have some type of insurance. By law, you must have a, a liability insurance minimum, a minimum of a liability insurance, meaning that I will then pay the insurance company their money. So if I wreck your car, it'll cover your car. won't cover mine, but at least cover yours. So the minimum means that you will take care of the, the financial responsibility of someone else's property. So what else is there? Life insurance. There's uh, health insurance. Anybody, got, anybody on health insurance? Yeah, we're on health insurance. And so we're paying the insurance company, and we're hoping that we stay healthy, but the insurance company's there in case something happens. You get meningitis. Big hospital bill, bam. What happened to the family? You got to pay this hospital bill. All right? So insurance is where you are betting on yourself or betting against you. Instead of saying, I know I'm a great driver. I'm betting I'm a great driver. That would be driving without insurance. You save the money. I know I'm going to stay healthy. I'm going to bet without health insurance. I know that uh, I'm going to live forever. So you're betting without and not buying life insurance. So you're betting against yourself and the insurance company's betting that you are a good driver. You're betting you're not. They're betting you are going to live long. You're betting you're not. It's nothing more than a bet. And so what they'll do is they have statistics. All of these people that have been insured before you in the same groups that you are in, same educational level, same area, the whole nine yards, and they write down what they think it costs to keep you covered. And that is your premium. So you need to obtain insurance. Your betting will get sued, so you have liability insurance. Your betting you're going to get injured, so you have accident insurance. And you're betting you're going to get killed or die, and that's why you have life insurance. The insurance company is betting that you won't be sued, that you won't be injured, and that you will live a long and prosperous life. Better to bet that you're on the short end of the stick than what it is to say, I think I'm really that good. One accident can financially ruin a family. One vehicle accident could financially ruin a family. Now, the minimum that the state requires, unlike car insurance, is only like $40,000. $40,000. If someone hit my pickup and it totaled it, their $40,000 and then some will be gone. So if you hit my truck and you total my truck and lo and behold, your $40,000 is done and yet there's still more money, who pays for that? Yeah, you do. And so, if it's you that was driving, all right, I've got you in it. Oh, you were driving your parents' car? You let them up? I'm going to bring them into it because they let you drive it. It's their car. And then, of course, I'm going to sue the insurance company. And so, don't look at bare minimums on health insurance or life insurance or uh, homeowner's insurance or car insurance because... You see these cars that drive around, even in this parking lot. $40,000 on a lot of those cars over here? Nothing. What if you hit somebody and you hit the $40,000 car, which then throws it into the $120,000 car? You're responsible for both. So it's not a fun thing to, to worry, uh, to have, but insurance is a deadly, it's just an awful necessity. So here's your health, health insurance. And so in your general health insurance policy, you have from the policy covers for illness, hospitalization, and emergency. Okay? So if you get sick, this is your policy that your parents have on you. You get sick, you break your arm, you get the flu, whatever. That's your general health insurance policy. Then there's a secondary insurance policy. Ah, so you've got insurance, and you're playing football. Better yet, you're not even playing football. You're standing on the sideline of, of the ball game working as a trainer, right? Somebody plows you over. Your insurance is first. 
All right? Your parents' insurance on you is first. Then, since it was at school, and the school buys a secondary insurance policy, it's secondary. Yours pays first, this pays second. So, the coverage, and this is what most high schools and collegiate programs pay for to cover their bills, and that's after your primary, you know, just like primary schools, one through five, their first. So after the primary pays, the secondary will then help pick up the tab. Does that mean that the secondary will pay for everything the primary does not? It doesn't. But I've seen it as little as somebody had hand surgery and, I, and their entire out-of-pocket after the, the insurances both had paid was $15 pretty cheap to have surgery. But remember, that falls, it goes all the way back to, you're standing on that sideline, so you have assumed the risk of being injured. We've actually had some folks that come through here and they'll say, well, I get shin splints. Secondary school policy is not going to pay for shin splints because it's not an accident. It's an overuse syndrome. And since it won't pay for the doctor to see that, it's not going to, nothing. It won't pay for anything. So this mama comes in one day, and she says, well, my kid's running for the school. The school's going to pay for it. I said, no, ma'am, it's not. She said, what do you mean? I told her, I said, it's, a second, it's, a, it's not an accident. No one got hit. No one got hurt just from pounding. There are people that think that they are entitled to have everything done because you, as a kid, was running for the school. This is in the pro program. You don't have to run for the school. That's your decision, not ours. You don't come to school to run track, right? You come to school to get an education. If you want to run track, that is an extra curricular activity, all right? So you assume the risk. So don't think that it's going to cover everything because you think it should, all right? Family health insurance, most, most athletes are covered by a family plan where the family is covered from a parent at work. So I come to work, I pay my bill before I even see my paycheck, and I get health insurance. And we're going to talk about all these fun words here in a minute. But that's what most of them have is a family health insurance policy. So, all right, your terminology. Allowable charge. An allowable charge is charges allowed by the policy that you've bought. Now, girls, you can buy a health insurance policy, and if you're absolutely 100% positive, you're not ready for a family, and you will not be with family, you can buy a cheaper insurance policy by buying a policy that has no coverages or allowable charges for childbirth. Now, what happens if, oh my goodness, there's a child, you pay for it. Just like the secondary policy we we're just talking about, has to be an accident insurance policy. It's a secondary policy for accident. It does not cover the flu. So if a kid catches the flu while sitting on the bus, which I don't know how you could ever prove, but no, I'm sorry, Mom. It's not. It's not an allowable charge. So, as far as your health insurance, what is allowable or not allowable is between you and the health insurance company and what plans they have. Got it? If you think you have to have two physicals a year and they, get, and they say, no, you only get one physical a year, well, one's allowable. Two's not. Your beneficiary is who benefits from the insurance plan. Well, just because your parents pay for it, you're going to have benefit. You are on that health insurance, so you are a beneficiary. The life insurance policy, I pay for the life insurance, but I'll never see the money because I have to die first. So the beneficiary would be my wife. Well, that's as long as Gus is, if Gus is still alive, he gets it first. Okay? It's a long process there. You have to go through all. Um, and the application process and be vetted and so forth to take care of Gus. But whoever gets what 
is promised in the insurance is the beneficiary. So what are your benefits? Well, benefits are what the insurance policy will pay for. We getting this? You all understanding this? Now, does the insurance company, so you broke your leg last week, and we're so sorry that you did, uh, but it looks like you're well now, but you did go get x-rays, and you had to have them put a pin in it and everything, right? So does your insurance company just telepathically know that, oh, wow, you broke your leg and we need to pin? No, you have to tell them. And so you file a claim. And the claim is the paperwork that you got to file so the insurance company knows what happened. So how do they do that? They type it all in. They send it electronically. Nobody uses snail mail anymore. So what's your deductible? I'm going to tell you what my deductible is as far as money. $2,500 for health insurance. $2,500. You know what it used to be? Less than 10 years ago? $200. It was $200. And now it's 20 times as much? 10 times as much, for sure. Yeah. How do you like that? Deductible. How much I have to pay out of my pocket before my insurance works. You got it on car insurance, you have thousand dollar deductible. First thousand dollars is yours, sweetheart. But oh, you've got a five hundred dollar deductible. So your monthly payment's gonna be higher than her because the insurance company's not gonna have to shell out another five hundred dollars. So that's where you save money on insurance is changing how much deductibles are. Some people will actually go and they say, well, I can't afford it. can't afford it. That's a lot of money. How am I going to pay for $2,500 if, if something happens to me? So they buy a $1,000 deductible. What happens to the price of their insurance? It goes way up. All right? And so this week we'll show you, we're going to show you how you buy insurance and make a, an educated decision. Who's your dependent? The dependent is one who's depending upon the insurance that someone else's purchases. So, you all are dependent. They can write you off on taxes, that's what you call you, dependent. Same with on the insurance. I, it's my money, but all of my little children are my dependent. Exclusions. What's not paid for by the insurance policy? Just like we were saying about maternity, that could be an exclusion. They can exclude... HIV, they can exclude Zika virus, they can exclude whatever they want to, but as long as you agree to it, you're stuck with it. If you want to not agree to it, you'll have to buy a different policy. All right, so, you know, she just got back from coming to the doctor plenty of times. So just came back from going to the doctor, you did what? You went to the doctor, you sent in a... Can't hear you. You went to the doctor and you sent in a. How the insurance company know? You sent a claim in to the insurance company. You paid your deductible up front, okay? Because you are the dependent. Nothing was excluded, and the insurance company is going to send you a letter immediately, usually within a week. And that insurance company's letter says, okay, you went to the doctor. Well, the doctor costs $4,000. So then it puts in there, $4,000. Adjusted price, for uh, $3,000. They already saved you $1,000. Up your $2,500 deductible. So they paid $500. So they have to send you what it what benefits you got, and it's called an explanation of benefits. Now, the one thing we hadn't talked a lot about is, is that we talked about you have insurance, but you got to trade something for insurance. And guess what that is? Trade something for your insurance. What do you think it is? Trade something for gasoline. What do you trade? What? Money. Yes. So it's not called a bill, it's called a premium. Premium is nothing more than a bill that's got to be paid monthly 
annually, uh, semi-annually, every six months. You pay your car insurance. You can, house insurance is every year. My health insurance is once a month. So that's what it's called. So I think this is the last portion of it. Here are the types of insurance policies that really affect athletics. And that is an accident insurance policy. You get in an accident. I accidentally fell and broke my leg while playing football because that guy was bigger than me. And I didn't want to hit him. You can write it up where anything's an accident. She accidentally fell off the table. She fell off the table and accidentally twisted her leg. Anything can be an accident. But that's what covers athletics. Now, it doesn't just cover athletics at Magnolia ISD. It also covers FFA, covers cheerleaders, covers, if we had a bowling team, it cover a bowling team. It won't cover, what's that stuff, lacrosse. Even though it says Magnolia on their jerseys, it's not a UIL sport. It will cover going to and from academic uh, competitions. Somebody has an accident, they're on a anything UIL. Yes, yes, you all do too. So. You have professional liability insurance. And we talked about negligence, right? Somebody screws up now and then. They're screw up. We make mistakes, we're human. Only one of us never did that. He's not here right now. So I accidentally pushed the wrong button. The next thing I know, I'm frying you like bacon and burns burns your skin. All right? You sue me. You did make sure about I was up for 18 hours a day before, and 20 hours a day before that, I was worn out. I'm sorry, accidents. Well, I'm going to still sue you. Well, you'll sue my professional liability insurance. If I screw up as an athletic trainer, that pays for my screw up. If lawyers screw up and they get to be a malpractice suit, they have malpractice professional liability insurance. Same with doctors, physical therapists. Um, nurses, etc. Catastrophic insurance. That policy, the first one, is only going to pay up to $25,000. $25,000 to take care of your injury. If it costs more than $25,000, you, you, you want the insurance to continue, right? But if we put it in this first policy, to where it goes up to $2 million on any claim, the cost of that insurance would be so high, nobody would be able to afford it. So the catastrophic insurance is a separate policy. Once it gets past $25,000, then it kicks in and the other one stops. All right? I've not seen one, knock on wood, that's kicked in on anybody that I've seen. But a friend of mine, had somebody in theater, yes, UIL theater, have to use the catastrophic insurance policy because, you know, in a theater they got doors, ups and downs, and also one of those huge doors came down on someone's foot and crushed his foot. And we're talking had six, seven surgeries on that foot. $25,000. Uh, somebody gets paralyzed. That's more than 25 grand. Somebody gets some kind of crazy double ACL or something. But usually it, it ends up being a paralysis type situation. Once it's past $25,000, then that is when that's going to kick in. Is that it? It is. So tomorrow, we review.